Well, good morning. And welcome to a slightly different video today. Now, a few weeks ago, I published a video where I talked about how I thought we could revolutionize the British energy industry by installing solar panels on social housing. Quite a few of you got in touch and said, what about all the houses that couldn't have panels on them for people that live in flats or houses that were unsuitable for them? Well, in the video, I said, I thought probably the fairest way to do this would be to install solar farms on agricultural land that's not being used and then use, allocate those people a portion of that farm. So they would still have their panels. They would just be in a field as opposed to on top of their house. And I got lots of suggestions about ways that were better than using agricultural land to build solar farms. So today, we're going to go and visit three different sites. We're going to go and look at a solar farm built on agricultural land. We're going to go and look at a solar farm that's built on some land that otherwise would probably be left to go wild. And we're going to go and look at my favorite, a brand new facility that has solar canopies over parking spaces in a park and ride. So with that, let's get on the road. For our first site, we're going to visit a solar farm near the Bedfordshire town of Sandy. Sandy has been a town since Roman times and is famous, as you probably guessed, for sand. But today it's a small rural town located on the A1, just south of Huntingdon and St Neots. Today we're going to take a look at an existing solar farm that's about to get a lot bigger. Lowfield Farm is located on the east side of Sandy and as you can see is a small to medium sized solar farm. Located on land close to an industrial estate it's ideally positioned to supply power to the local businesses. But a planning application has been submitted to enlarge the site considerably. These plans to extend to the south follow along the side of the east coast mainline. Whilst the land is classed as agricultural and could be farmed, the amount of land is actually quite small in the grand scheme of things. And it doesn't impact upon the local landscape at all. This is because it's situated in a shallow valley and you can't really see the solar farm unless you're stood really on the bridge over the East Coast Main Line. It is hidden from view. Personally, I think this is a really good compromise. It's quite a small area of land overall. It's hidden in a shallow valley to keep it out of sight and it's right next to the companies that will consume the energy. By installing solar and running the farm for 25 to 30 years, it actually allows the land to recover from years of intensive farming. And once the solar system is removed at the end of its life, the land can easily be returned to agricultural use with little or no effort. Now let's head to another site where solar has been installed on land that would probably be unfarmable. Welcome to Grafham Water, a reservoir in Cambridgeshire that's advertised by Anglia Water as the third largest reservoir in England. Like anybody cares who's the third largest anything. As you can see, the solar farm has been built on the back side of the reservoir's retaining wall. Land that would otherwise be unfarmable. Probably the last thing you want are farmers digging behind your retaining wall for a reservoir. If this land hadn't been used for solar, it would probably have just been left to nature and by now would be one massive bramble bush. The solar farm is ideally located to help provide power to the local area while not taking up valuable agricultural land. The farm itself is 11.6 megawatts or in individual panels that's approximately 43,000 panels. And this allows the site to meet about one quarter of Anglia Water's needs to run the reservoir, all its associated pumping and filtration equipment. Next, we're off to a site in my own backyard, and I believe this is the future of solar farms, albeit on a slightly smaller scale. Welcome to the St Ives, the one in Cambridgeshire, not the one in Cornwall, park and ride site. Compared to solar farms on agricultural land, it's quite small, at only one megawatt. It also includes 237 kilowatt hours of battery storage and nine 22 kilowatt electric car chargers. But unlike some other projects, they've actually thought ahead and already pre-cabled the site to allow the easy installation of more electric car chargers as the needs arise. 
The site is a car park at one end of the Cambridgeshire guided busway, an off-road way for local buses to move between villages and ultimately into Cambridge while staying off the busy A14. This helps provide fast and cheap transport between the villages and Cambridge for locals. The solar canopy has been installed over about one third of the car park and provides not only sheltered parking, but also a revenue stream to the local council. Now, I really believe this should become a blueprint for all outdoor parking lots. It's been such a success in a short space of time that St Ives Council has already started on a second canopy at their nearby council-run leisure centre. All three of these projects have merits, and although we think of the UK as a small country, we have plenty of space for all three types to exist. However, in my opinion, the solar canopy project is a game changer. How many car parks could have solar canopies? How much extra power would that bring to the grid and help break our dependence on gas? Well, that's it. So what do you think? Now, what I'd like you to do is choose which is your favorite. If you like the use of agricultural land or agricultural land that is no longer being farmed, then put A in the comments. If you think we should be using uh, land that is not suitable for agricultural use, put B in the comments. Or if you think we should be covering up car parking spaces with solar canopies, put C in the comments. And I promise I will come back to you with the results in a few weeks' time. With that, I'm going to sign off because I probably need to concentrate on driving. And I'll see you all back here real soon for another video. Take care. Bye-bye.